Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. I am Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to talk about jitter. Jitter is the visual side of Max MSP. It's how you do anything with images, movies, visual animation, rendering, whatever you want. If it's visual, jitter is your go-to and it is its own object data type, uh, which may be confusing if you're new to Max MSP, but it also helps make things incredibly easier. Much like how audio and uh, all of those objects have a tilde at the end, so you know that you're dealing with audio stuff, Jitter all starts with JIT. If you wanna do anything visual in Max, it's going to be JIT.Bracose, so JIT.Window, JIT.PWindow, JIT.Movie, JIT.Noise, JIT.Matrix, JIT Rota. Uh, there's so many Jitter objects, and you can just type in JIT and look at this dropdown list, or we could go search through the objects in the little search icon. Um, just familiarizing yourself with all of the Jitter objects and what their function is, is how you're going to get better at visual programming in Max MSP. And as always, I recommend always checking out the help files for all of the objects too, because they all provide examples of how that object is used. Um, let's look at one jitter object now, uh, a very basic jitter object and a great way to learn about jitter, jit.movie. And it plays a movie file or image from your computer. So if you had a video that you wanted to load into Max MSP and look at in Max MSP, you'd use jit.movie. And we have to send the jit.movie object the read message in order to see or read the video file into the jit.movie. Now, if we wanted to see the jit.movie object, we need to create a window to host the visual data coming through. And there's two very basic objects to do that. You can either use jit.window, uh, which creates this nice floating window for us that we can move around, or we can do jit.p window, which creates an in the patch window. And it is literally a window that is in the patch like another object. Um, and we could use either one of these to view uh, the movie file that we're going to load into this jit.movie. But like everything in Max, it has to be patched in. So we have to take the jit.movie and we have to patch it to the jit.window in order to see it in our uh, floating widget, which is actually disappeared right now. So I'm gonna real quick change the attribute for the jit.window to at for the floating, say at floating one, which will actually then allow this window to always float above what other whatever other window is there. And now we can see it when we click away and see whatever changes we make to it. It's a little helpful thing. Or we could also patch our jit.movie into our jit.p window. And that visual data is going to come through both of these patch cords into these windows and show in both of these. Um, real quick thing to point out right here. You'll notice this jit.movie patch cord is green. All jitter objects will have green patch cords. It helps you know what they are um, and that you're dealing with jitter data. Audio patch cords were like yellow, max patch cords are gray, jitter patch cords are green, and it is just a little helpful color coding stuff, um, just so you know what you're doing. And now that we've got this all set up, we are going to lock our patch and we're gonna click the read message to read in a video file. I'm gonna pick this one and we have now read that video into this jit.movie object. So it is in fact sitting internally in this jit.movie object. However, we're not seeing any visual stuff yet. And that is another very important part of jitter that we need to talk about. And that is that jitter objects need to receive a bang to output their frames. In our beginner series, when we were talking about at the very beginning bangs and what they are, I mentioned every max object needs to receive a bang in order to do its function and jitter objects are no different they just have to receive a bang to do their function in this case jit.movie has to receive a bang to do its function of outputting the frame of the video um, so if we patch a button into that object and we lock our patch and we click it it's going to send that bang out and now the jit.movie has output that frame uh, of when it received the bank through these patch cords to both of our windows. Um, 
and if we click it again we'll get another frame and if we try to click it uh, really quickly as fast as we possibly can we'll start to see some sense of video playback um, which is pretty cool but obviously we don't want to have to sit here and continuously click this button like I'm doing uh, to play video in max MSP we want uh, the max patch to be able to take care of that itself so we're going to now get rid of this button and instead we're going to create a metro object which outputs a bang at a specified millisecond interval and if we set our metro to 30 milliseconds we're going to get approximately 30 frames a second so let's patch that metro into our jit.movie object and we'll patch a toggle into the metro and I just created this toggle object by pressing the T hotkey and if we lock our patch now we can click this toggle on these uh, bangs are being sent out of this patch cord through uh, into this jit.movie and now the video frame data is being output at a consistent rate of 30 frames approximately a second. And we see that super smooth, nice, wonderful video playback happening in Max MSP. Um, and that's pretty much the absolute, absolute basics to doing anything with jitter. You just got to know you got to send the jitter source a bang so it outputs its frame. And you got to patch it through to a window so we can see what we are doing. Um, but this is not the only thing that jitter is used for. We can also create tons of effects and whatnot with these. Um, one very basic and good introduction into jitter effects is the jit.burkosa object, which adjusts the image's brightness, contrast, and saturation. Burkosa is kind of a weird name, but it stands for brightness, contrast, saturation. So that's kind of a helpful way to remember what it is. And if we create that object, and we take these patch cords and patch it into the outlet and patch our jit.movie into the jit.burkosa. We have now reestablished our signal flow. So the movie is being hosted in here. It is outputting its frames through this patch cord into our jit.burkosa effect where we will start to adjust the brightness, contrast, and saturation. And then we will take that adjusted video and patch it through output it through these patch cords into our window for the final viewing. Um, and let's do that. So one way to learn about these objects is to open up the help file, as I've mentioned, and we see there's an example that is pretty similar to what we have set up, a video going through the Percosa into a window so you can see it. And they have these helpful objects, which are called adder UIs, uh, which let us adjust the attributes of this object, which we can also see in this list over here. So you see there's the attribute brightness, the attribute contrast, and the attribute saturation. And that's what is listed here. And as I adjust these values, um, we see it is in fact adjusting the brightness, contrast, and saturation in the final video output. So here's the original, here's our adjusted, and we see how this makes sense through the flow of visual data through these patch cords. Um, so let's take this and apply it to our uh, patch out here. So I had mentioned that that object we were just playing with is called the adder UI. If you create a new object and you type A-T-T-R-U-I, adder UI, into it, you'll create that object, but a very uh, s more simple way to create it is just press the A key. Uh, it will create an adder UI object, and then if you patch it into the object, lock the patch and click where you, it says nothing, you'll see it's actually full of stuff, not nothing. Um, so let's select the brightness, let's select the contrast, and then real quick, uh, we'll unlock our patch and create a, another adder UI object and patch that in. And we'll type in a comment box and the name of these objects. Remember, it is adder UI. And we'll move that there, lock our patch, and this one can be saturation. So now we are going to adjust the brightness, the contrast, and the saturation of this video. And it's already pretty colorful, so it's kind of hard, I guess, to kind of see some changes. But it is, in fact, working. We are adjusting these values, and you can go positive or negative, and you can go to whatever you like it can get pretty crazy. So the default values for this, remember, is one, one, one. Uh, this is the default, so this is an unaffected brightness uh, contrast saturation image. Um, if Let's load in a new video file. Um, something maybe 
here's a video render I did of, yeah, we'll use this one. We'll do Seattle. This is a 3D model of Seattle that I created from an image procedurally, also through Jitter stuff in uh, Max MSP. And this is the video of it. And we can also, like we're saying, adjust the brightness of it uh, or the contrast or the saturation. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Um, and like I was saying, these values could be really whatever you want as long as you think it looks good, I'd say. Um, that is completely up to you as the artist. Just the important thing to remember, if you want to reset these back to the default value, it is one, one, one for everything. Um, that is not the, always the case with every jitter object or attribute, but it is with the jit.bercosa object. Um, so there we go. We are taking this video and we are doing some kind of effect to it. And then we are seeing that in this uh, window. So we're gonna use this as the final output. I'm gonna take this patch cord and patch it into the jit.movie so we can see the original unaffected video file. Um, I'm gonna make it small, um, that's okay, just so it's there. And we can kind of now see the difference between the two um, that we have. And that's pretty sweet. That is um, pretty much the basics of it. some, just the concept of what is Jitter. But it, there is so much we can do with Jitter. And I I want to talk about it all because I love Jitter. It, it, I, it, I use it for everything. I do a lot of visual design and Jitter is just like the best for doing this stuff. It's amazing what we can accomplish. Um, so I highly recommend uh, just starting to familiarize yourself with as many jitter objects as you can because the more objects you know about and how they work the more tools you have in your tool belt to do cool visual programming stuff and again this is just an introduction into the concept of what is jitter so i'm gonna leave it right here and keep it pretty basic um but we'll talk about more effects and objects and ideas as we get more into the jitter visual programming uh, side of these tutorials. So I hope you found this helpful and learned something that you did not know before. If you did, um, please like and subscribe because that's uh, what lets me know that you learned something and that I'm doing a good job with these videos. Um, if you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. Just leave them in the comments down below. And also, if you're curious about me as an artist or maybe as a teacher and want to learn more about Max MSP, I have a Patreon link to that in the description uh, where you can subscribe there. We are doing more extra learning stuff and I kind of share some art stuff uh, as I create it early um, before I post it anywhere else. So it's pretty cool if you want to see some of that stuff as well. Um, I just recommend checking it out. But otherwise, uh, that's it. That's everything I got for you today. And I will see you guys in the next video.